Okay, so in this video you're gonna learn Unreal Engine 5 interface. And the first thing you're gonna see here when you open up is this big screen here that covers up almost all the entire canvas. So this screen is basically the world and this is where you will navigate in your game and spend the majority of time with. There are some things you need to know about this one. First, let's learn how to navigate. Right click and move the mouse to rotate the camera in different directions so you can change the viewport. Then you can move with W or S while holding the right mouse to go move forward or backwards and then the left and the right to just move in left or right with A and D. Also you can, while still holding a right click, just click E to go up and Q to go down. And these are the basic controls that you have in your camera. If you hold the left one, you will be able to move just by using the mouse. So this this kind of navigation is a little bit unique to Unreal Engine, but it's been there for years, so once you get used to it, it will be very comfortable. So more on the viewport here uh, later, but for now, the first thing you need to know is that nothing has changed much. First, it's just being organized a little bit. You have your create buttons. For example, I can create different things and it's a little bit more organized. And you can create lights, for example, and I can create a point light. And my point light is create at the origin. So I can just move it here. And you can see I have my light here. Okay. And if I press G, I can go into game mode or get out of game mode, okay? And you can create different things, like for example, you can create a cube. And if you drag this, like if I click here, I click create, I click the cube, it will go to the origin. But if I click here and then drag it, it will go where my mouse is at. So. This is very useful. Now, you can create many different things and we will go through them uh, later. Uh, for now, we're just taking a look at the interface. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that your content browser, which is called content drawer now, <laughs> it's, uh, it's hidden. And you can find it here. You can either click this focus content browser and you can take a look at this. But the problem is once you click here, you will lose the focus. And another thing you can do control space to open it up. And you can, as, as long as you have the mouse here, you can check the content browser and you can go back. This is very useful. If you don't want to check the content browser anytime, you can only do control space and look for whatever asset you may want to find and place it in the world. The other thing is that you can open content, different content browsers windows. So if I open this one, you will see I have another content browser here. And if I click this one, this will stay here. So what I can do here is if I have another screen, I can just move it there. But if you don't have another screen, you can click here and you will see I can enter this window into different points of my viewport. And also I can put it here where I can have different tabs. For example, if I decide to put it here, now my content browser will be at the top. And even if I click here, it won't go away. But if I move it here, now I have an entire window to check my content browser, which gives me a little bit more room to check more assets. 
but I won't be able to check the world. So depends on what kind of thing you do. And you can have many content browsers. Even if you have this one here, if I put control space, I still have access to my to my content drawer. So that's one thing. The next is the blueprints. This is still the same. You can create a new blueprint class with this like a new actor, just check the folder. More into blueprints later, in more details. But for now, uh, this is just still pretty much the same. Of course, the interface has a different taste. But as you can see, my blueprint is in another window. So I can drag it here, and I can have everything here. And I can control tab to move into different folders, okay? So let's save it. Okay, next one is the cinematic. Of course, you can add a level sequence, just like before. Uh, we will touch that topic later. And later is the create. The create is your shelf to create different kind of stuff. For example, you can create a landscape. I'm more into that later. Or you can create foliage, where you can paint. For example, if I want to drop some foliage here, I could go into my content browser and I can check my meshes here, my props, and I go into my bush and I put it here. Okay, and now when I paint, I can decrease the size of this, I can just paint my foliage here. Okay. So that's one of this, uh, but we won't take a look into this. Next is the mesh paint. So if I click on this one, you will be able to paint some colors here for the vertex paint. So I'm more into that later. And then it's a fracture too, which you will be able to create a new fracture mesh like new asset for destruction. Next is the active brush editing, which is like a, for example, I can use my pen, I can let's see if I can spacebar and enter. All right, so <laughs> more into that later actually. Um, let's just take a look at the interface and then you have your modeling tools and why I have this one is because I have enabled in my plugins uh, how to use the modeling tools so if I click here and then go to plugins I can modeling tools and this one I have enabled and this is the reason I have this one next we have our word outliner which is the same as before and you know, it's all the actors of the world, you will be able to put them here. So if I put a new box here, and I create this one. Okay, uh, you will see my box here. It's automatically put into my world outliner. And also I have the properties for this. And you can change the transform, you can rotate it, okay, and many, many other things. So if you hold this one, you can move up or down the space of your details of your windows. And if you don't like it, you can also move it to another one or take it back here. Now if here are some other settings for example if you don't have a very nice computer you can change the quality here to low and this will lower the graphics or you can change up to cinematic quality where it will be most performance heavy so by default these ones are on epic quality and you can do the same for the materials and the preview quality render so 
one last thing if your engine is in another language you can go to the editor preference I believe and then you can ch check language here and here you can change the language to any language you want so this is it for this video we'll take a look at the viewport how to navigate how the create shelf is and where are the buttons now so in the next coming videos we will take a look at more details into these features so uh, if you like this video give us a like subscribe and let us know in the comments which kind of video you would like to watch and if you're making a game make sure to check the links in the description to get some help